Hi, I'm Ashley from Sunny Made, and today we are going to learn how to make a flower block. Hello friends, welcome back. I am glad you're here. Today we're going to make a quilt together and we are going to make it from a jelly roll. So if you are a jelly roll fan, we are going to be making a quilt from a jelly roll. Now, just for information, a jelly roll is also two and a half inch strips. You usually get 40 of them and it has a full fabric line in them. And so that's what we're going to make it from. So let me show you the block that we are going to make today. And it is this beautiful flower block. I'm going to teach you how to make it in two different ways. First, we're going to sew the, we're going to do a stitch and flip method and sew it onto the strips first before we add it to the flower. And then the second way is a, what I like to call snowball technique. A snowball technique is also a flip and stitch, but you're going to put the pieces on and then snowball the corners out. So we're going to, I'm going to teach you how to do that. At that point, I'm going to show you two different ways you can put this quilt together, or you can um, put it together any number of ways. Uh, but I have thought of two and I'm going to show you how to do both of them. Okay, so what I did first is I combined two strips that I thought would go together, um, that looked good together to create a block from. So I have two sets of them here. Once I got one set and one set put together and I divided them all up, then I paired them up together and I thought, oh, all four of these look good together. If you are working with a jelly roll you're going to just find that all of those fabrics actually go really well together so what i'm going to do is next lay them out on top of each other these are just a single layer they do not need to be um, doubled up and we are going to cut these up to prepare them for our quilt block What's nice about this is with four strips of fabric, we're going to end up with four different blocks. And we actually will have some left over. So if you want to do more blocks at the end, it's definitely, you definitely will have enough left over. You can do more blocks. And I guess as we go, we'll see if I decide to do that. So first, what I want to do is trim off that salvaged edge. What I like to do is line it up on the line and I'm going to just line up my ruler with the lines on, on the cutting mat and trim off that salvaged edge. If you look at this, this is a two and a half inch square and then we have a four and a half inch, a six and a half inch and the next row next set is a six and a half inch and an eight and a half inch i actually decided to do all of my points here the middle of my flat flowers the middle of my flowers all the same color i'm not going to trim this out of my strips here but if you want this to match up with one of these colors you can go ahead and trim this is just a two and a half inch by two and a half inch so for our first, we need a four and a half inch and a six and a half inch. And I'm just going to get my ruler, line up that edge, four and a half inch, line up a, a straight edge, four and a half inch, and a six and a half inch. So this is going to take the place of this first set here. Put those together. Okay, next we need a six and a half inch and an eight and a half inch. So this 
going to line up that bottom edge and that edge here. Now something you might want to do is go ahead and iron these before you start trimming because it does have that crease in the middle from being folded for a very long time. So this is eight and a half inch um, lined up the bottom edge and this other edge. Okay, and as you can see, there's still a good one. You can still either get another set of these or another set of these out of this if you would like to make more. Okay, so first I have my first round and my second round. That's what I call here. First round and second round. Next, what I'm going to do is lay out my quilt block. So I have my center point. We have block here. These are both two and a half inch, okay? And this is a four and a half inch by two and a half inch rectangle. And that's gonna make up this square right here. We are then going to take the four and a half inch and the six and a half inch and the colors i paired with this one were so a six and a half inch and the eight and a half inch so here is our first part of our layout what i'm first going to do is sew these together and then i'm going to prep all of these with my points First, let's take a look at this quilt block. This is the quilt block we are gonna make. I'm gonna show you how to make it two different ways. Our first one is gonna be where we do a stitch and flip on our pieces before we sew them on. And the second one is going to be a snowball where we do the stitch and flip after we've already sewn them on to the bigger pieces. Okay, I have sewn these first pieces together and I just iron them towards that background fabric. Next, we are going to set up our first round of petal points. We have two of them. Um, we're going to put the smaller one on first, iron it towards the petal points fabric, and then sew on the second one. In order for us to get these cutouts here, we are going to use the stitch and flip and net method. So you need two background squares that are two and a half inches by two and a half inches and we are going to draw a line corner to corner on both of them okay if we're looking at it this way we are then going to place this one so the diagonal is coming down this direction and this one so the diagonal is coming down this direction as well. If you note on this one, the longer side with the point is going to be towards that smaller piece of fabric. So what I'm gonna do is take these two pieces over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew right on that line or slightly to the side of that line. One of the tricks I'm going to show you in order to get this nice and neat so that you don't have to do um, a lot of trimming on these is if you take this just like this and you fold it back so you're lining up those edges, the top and the side edge, with this background fabric and then you're going to iron them in place you are going to get a nice square look and it's going to be all ready for you to sew on. So once this one's all ironed, so I got this one ironed, it's all lined up on those edges. I'm just going to take my rotary cutter. It's not going to be anything specific. And very carefully trim off those extra two layers of fabric and you have your piece. So what I'm first going to do 
is take this piece and sew it on right here, iron it towards the first round of fabric, sew this one on and iron it towards this round of fabric. Okay, so here you have your piece together. I do have a little things that are off, so I'm gonna actually check it. This should be six and a half inches square. It's really close. Uh, if I line up this bottom corner, there is a little bit to trim, so I'm gonna just go ahead and do that. And now I have my next, I have it all ready for my next round. So again, we are going to take our next two pieces. Okay, just like we did with this round, we need two square pieces. These are two and a half inches by two and a half inches. We're drawing that line down the center. And just like the last round, we are going to sew this one on this direction and this one on this direction. As you can see by this, they both go in the same direction. I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine, sew these on, trim them up, and get them sewn onto my flower piece. Okay, once you have on your two other pieces, we now have our finished product. This is going to come out to be eight and a half inches by eight and a half inches. So I'm just gonna check it real quick. As a whole, it looks good. But I'm going to run my thing over it. And there you have your first way to make this flower block. So now we're going to move on to the second way. So what I'm going to do is pull out my other two colors that I haven't used. I did cut, if you remember, I cut four together. And we are going to use the other colors to create this second kind of block. So I have my first round, my second round, I have my point of my flower. Okay, so once again, we have a two and a half inch. Uh, point of our flower. It's going to look just like this. Two and a half inch, two and a half inch background. This is two and a half inches by four and a half inches. This is four and a half inches by the width of the strip, which is two and a half inches. This one is six and a half. And then we're going to have our second round, which is six and a half and eight and a half. So what I'm going to do is start by sewing this together and the two strips of the first round. Okay, so I have this first part of the block put together. As you can see, this is that center part. I ironed the background fabric, or I ironed this first part towards the background fabric, and just like I did on this block, I ironed that the first round of petals towards that first round, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take two of these squares, background squares, these are two and a half by two and a half inches square, and like I did with the other kind of block, I'm going to draw that line diagonal corner to corner. Now we want our points all to go to the same direction, so I'm going to lay this one here like this, and then I'm going to lay this one here like this. And once again, I'm going to sew right along that edge of the line. Okay, so I have sewn both of these corner pieces on in the direction of the diagonal. I then am going to fold this back and iron it just like I taught you to do with this. We're just gonna line up those edges on both of them. Okay, and I'm gonna go iron this, okay? And then I'm gonna come back and trim off those bottom two layers. 
So now we have our first round of petals on our flower. And as you can see, so this is called the snowball method. We're sewing them on and we're cutting off those corners. We are then going to take our six and a half inch, sew it here, and our eight and a half inch, sew it here, and get ready to do the snowball method again with our green pieces. Okay, I have my next round sewn on, and we are gonna do the corner pieces just like we did with that first round. We're going to draw the line corner to corner. We're going to sew them on, going the same direction as the other ones. Whoops, I get it going the right direction, right? Okay, iron them open and trim off those bottom layers. Okay, trim off those last two and we have our quilt block. Last thing I'm going to do is I want to trim this up. This is going to be eight and a half by eight and a half. Um, I'm going to actually line it up with this square edge down here. Looks good. One, two sides. Turn it around and trim up my last two sides. Now that we're done with our two pieces, remember how I talked about we had four different strips, we cut them all out. Okay, I'm gonna pull these up right here and pull over our other ones. So here are our outer, our outer, um, rows and our inner rows. Now we can do exactly the same way if you want, just opposites, okay? That's always an option. What I'm actually going to do is take these and switch them. So my outside is gonna be stripes, my inside is gonna be purple, so we're having a new color combination and these two I'm gonna to put together. Let me show you a set that I did. So this was my original one, and here was my other one. So my two pieces that I made. And then when I switched the pieces around, I put my orange with this dark red and the smaller flower with the larger flower. And so I'm gonna end up with four different looking blocks. Now, like I said, you can just switch these so they look exactly the same, but you have the yellow in the middle and the stripes on the outside, or you can mix those up. Now, what I'm gonna do at this point is take my strips and I'm gonna cut them all up, which is what I did here. Here are my strip sets, they go together. So I have my first round and my second round of each of these four fabrics. I'm then gonna take these all over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew my blocks together until I have a whole stack of flower blocks. At that point, we're gonna decide how we want to put our quilt blocks together. Now that we have our first set of flower blocks done, we still have strips of our jelly roll that are about this long. And if we pair them up in to two together, we can still make one more flower block with them. Now, I don't like to have very many leftovers, so I'm going to actually use up all of my strips. So what I would just do, decide which one I want in the middle and which one I want on the outside and to trim those accordingly. So for the middle, I'll use the green. We need a four and a half inch piece. And looks like there's, that it is wrinkly, a little bit of wrinkly, but 
I need a four and a half and a six and a half inch for that middle section. And then for the outer layer, I need a six and a half inch with an eight and a half inch. And depending on how many strips you used out of your jelly roll will determine how many you have left, how many you will end up with. Now I had a white strip, so I did not use that as part of my jelly roll or as part of putting it around my flower. So I'm going to actually end up with 56 flower blocks. So I'm gonna go put this block together and meet you back here. Okay, so this would actually be a really fun way to put this block together. I'd probably switch those since those two pieces are so similar. Um, and you can put this together like this. This creates a fun center, everything goes together. If you divide them up a little bit, you can put in some sashing. You could put a color piece here in the middle if you wanted to do that. Um, so there are several different ways that we can put these quilt blocks together. If you don't want to put the centers together, you can do you can do it like this. So they're all facing the same way in rows. You can put your centers together. This is actually kind of fun. Create a more open spot in the middle. So there's lots of different options that we're going, we can do with this. Now this quilt here I made when I had my daughter. I have three boys, um, love them to death. And when we went to have our fourth child, we figured we'd have another little boy and we ended up with a little girl. So it was super fun to be able to switch my nursery around to change things up. And so of course I had to make her a quilt. This is the quilt that I made for her at the time. And as you can see here in the middle is that beautiful flower block that I just taught you how to make. So here in this quilt, let me show you the center there. All of the stems are going towards the middle. I put a setting block in the middle there. And they are in a square. I think this is a fun way, and honestly, this is the original way I was going to teach you how to make this quilt, but after I started putting my blocks together, I thought, you know what, let's do something a little different. So we are going to sew some white sashing pieces on here, sew them then in a strip, alternating directions that the blocks are going, and then we are going to put the quilt together. Okay, now that we have this block together, I'm gonna to show you how I put together the quilt. As I showed you in that other quilt, I originally thought I would put it together so that the stems, the points of our flower block are all towards the center. But I actually decided I wanted to do something different. So what I did was I framed each block with two strips a background fabric and then once I have those two strips on I alternated how I put them together so once this one is sewn on with the pieces I have this one going down the side and the point of the flower going this way and then I will sew these ones on exactly the same as this, but then I turned it so that the point of the flower goes down this way. And what this does is it creates an offset of each flower of each block and a separation of each block, and, but it, then it goes together beautifully.
Okay, I have my quilt all done. It's ready to show you. Um, I put it on the long arm, got it all quilted, got it bound. I actually found some binding that is the exact same color as this purplish, light purplish pink color in my quilt at my favorite quilt store. So it's kind of fun to be able to bind it in that. Let me show you how it turned out. And there is the beautiful quilt. What do you think of the layout? I'd love to know if you like how I offset the blocks. Would you have put, put it together a different way? Um, this is what I put on the back. I thought it was a fun print that went well with the rest of the fabric. Since this fabric line was so old, I couldn't exactly go and um, get something that matched it. So I did what best I could. Okay, colors match. Look how well that goes. Um, I used a speckle from Ruby Star Society on the binding. And this is a really good size. I think it might actually be a twin size quilt. Let's think about this. So this ended up being 74 inches wide by 84 inches long, since each of those quilt blocks ended up being 10 inches square. So do you like it like this? Or should I have put the blocks together so that they did the pattern like I did here in this quilt. Which one do you like better? But I do like that you have several options on how to put the quilt together. Now I will be putting this one up over on Etsy. If you would like to purchase it, you can find the link down in my description box. And I hope you have a great week. Happy sewing.